Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to a new video. So in today's video, I want to talk about staying motivated as an artist. So I've done a similar video before, but I felt as if I missed some points that I believe are very important when it comes to this topic. So in today's video, I'm just going to list 10 tips that I find to be very effective when it comes to staying motivated to create on a daily basis. So sometimes I feel like not drawing at all. And I guess we all have these days. So on some days even, I feel like I can't even draw a stick figure. It's really weird and it sucks. I hate that feeling. I'm just going to share some tips on how to try to overcome that. So it doesn't work all the time, but I would say about 95% of all times, these tips do work for me. But um, we all do behave differently. We all have different personalities. So it could be that none of these tips are working for you, but just give them a try, see if they work or not. So the first tip that I'm going to give you is to have a positive mindset. Having a positive mindset starts even before you pick up the pencil. It's so important. So let's just imagine you're about to start a new illustration and you tell yourself negative things. So you tell yourself you're not capable of doing it. You're not able to pull it off. You don't have the skills, you're not experienced enough and whatever. So you're, you're bashing yourself, you're talking, you're talking yourself down. It doesn't really help. And, and the, the really bad thing about it is that the things you tell yourself kind of become reality in a way. So the more you tell yourself that you're not confident or that you're not able to do something, the less able you will be, the less confident you, you will be, because these things, they become reality, you know? So be very careful what you tell yourself. So instead of telling you all of these negative things, why not tell yourself that you are experienced enough, you do have the skills, and you are the right person to work on this project. Tip number two is to have small and daily habits or goals. I'm not saying that having long-term goals is a bad thing. It's actually something that I also find to be very important and we'll get to that in the next point. But having small daily goals that you can achieve are much more important to build up your confidence. So the way to build up your confidence is by achieving things, by, by winning at small things. And so make a list. So before you go to bed, make a list for the next day where you write down a couple of things, maybe three to five goals that you want to achieve, things that you want to finish. So a couple of small tasks. So for example, you could write down that you want to fill up one page in your sketchbook. And so I believe that like filling one page in your sketchbook isn't too much. It's something that's definitely doable. So come up with these small tasks, kind of like a to-do list, but keep it very simple. And then try to finish these things on a daily basis. And that's why I said you need to build daily habits as well. And the more you win at these things, so the more of these daily tasks or goals you, you achieve, the more confident you will become in your own abilities. And you'll also become more disciplined, which is to me something that's a very good trait to have. So being disciplined and... Um, Reliable is, is a very um, good trait to have as a person. And this is also very important or, or very effective in life in general. So not just as an artist. So for anything in life, write down a couple of things that you want to achieve the next day and, and then just try to work on them. Number three on my list is keeping your long-term goals in mind. So a long-term goal would be something like, where do you see yourself in a year from now, in five years from now? What kind of plans do you have? These long-term goals are something that um, have a deeper meaning and something that you really want to like accomplish in life. And so for me, for example, it used to be that I wanted to be a in-house comic book artist and that kind of shifted. So it's okay if they shift or if they change. That kind of shifted throughout the years to me being a concept artist for video games. And once I've reached that, I wanted to move on to the next thing. And ultimately, my goal was to become a freelance artist and, and to kind of be my own boss. Yeah, so have these long-term goals. Just imagine like you're working on something and you have no plans. That's kind of like very meaningless. So you have to have some kind of purpose in life. And so have some kind of long-term goal that you are working towards to. It kind of adds a, a meaning to the whole thing. 
The next point, number four, is to try out different mediums and materials. And this is something that I believe works for everybody. So whenever you kind of get stuck somewhere and you don't feel like creating, then try to do something that's exciting again. Pick up a new material or a new medium. So for example, I'm mainly a digital artist. And to kind of um, spark that fire again in me, I would perhaps pick up something like watercolor or oil paints or acrylics. Just something that kind of gets me going again. And whenever you try out something new, it, it becomes a little bit exciting. It's just an easy trick to kind of get you going again, to get you into that creative zone. Number five is very similar to number four, in which you should experiment with different styles and art genres. For example, if you're more of a realistic artist, then perhaps try drawing in a more cartoony style. If you're a concept artist, try drawing comic books. So switch the genres, try something new, experiment, see if something kind of clicks with you and then kind of just roll with it. And then try to combine these different styles into one and, and make something new out of that. Number six on my list is to keep your old sketchbooks to see if you're making any progress. And this is so important. And many beginners, they tend to kind of like put their sketchbooks away into their closet or they throw it away, which is even worse. But as I said, it's really important that you keep your sketchbooks because they're kind of like a point of reference. You can always go back to them to check on your own progress. So what's really important and something you need to be careful of is not to compare yourself to others too often. So instead of comparing yourself to other artists, what I would do instead is I would compare myself to myself. And a very cool way to do that is by looking at your old sketchbooks and comparing those drawings to your latest drawings. And that way you can very easily see if you've made any progress, if you've gotten better or if you've gotten worse. And you can also see the things that you're still doing wrong and then kind of analyze your work and know what to do next in order to um, improve. Um, moving on, number seven is to create and to work on your own project. So this is very important. And I don't know if you know about Jake Parker. He's the guy who came up with the idea for Inktober. And he has a video on this where he says, you should create your own project and then work on that. So for example, in his video, he said, create your own little comic book, design your own characters for it and a little story, and then just work on that and create a finished product, something that you can be proud of at the end. And so I totally agree with him. Things you could do, for example, are, as he said, you could create your own comic book, something like 15 to 20 pages if you're a beginner, or you could work on your own art book, perhaps create your own imaginary game. So this is something that I've did a couple of years ago. So I wanted to kind of put together a portfolio as a concept artist and I didn't know where to begin with, like, what should I design, right? Because I wasn't working on a project. I didn't have a job at the time. So I needed to come up with something that I could work on. I just um, designed a sequel to the Pokemon games. And so the game never has been made. It's just like an imaginary design. It was a very cool experience because you get to decide all of the ins and outs, the bells and whistles. And it's your own project and you can really become creative in it. So this is something that you could do, create your own imaginary game design or work on prints, on merch. So there's so many things you could do and, and spend your time with, but make it your own and make sure to finish it so that you have something that you can show to others and you can be really proud of your own work, you know? Next point is number eight, which is to join an art community or an art group. And so I'm talking mainly about online communities, so not local communities. Um, if you do have local communities, then that's great, but I never had any. So I would just, I would just suggest that you sign up to one of these forums or to social media. So Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, or maybe even art station and just upload your art there and try to get feedback from others and then try to um, make connections to others. You know, that's like very important, especially on social media. Why would you be there if you're not socializing with others? So number nine is very similar to the previous point in which um, you should have an art buddy. So 
Let's say you sign up to one of these art communities, you're meeting a bunch of new people, then become friends with some of them, like closer friends, and then have these art buddies that you study with. Why I suggest this is because when you have a friend that's also trying to become a professional artist, and let's say you're Skyping with them, you can kind of motivate each other to keep going. So especially if you're, if you're on the same level or on a, similar, on a similar level and you're trying to achieve the same things, it could be very like motivating to be working together. And this is what I've done. I was lucky enough to have a couple of friends that I used to Skype with and we had the same plans or similar plans. And so every day for hours, we would just motivate each other to keep going, to keep pushing ourselves. And um, these were like very productive years for me and some of the years where I've learned the most in the shortest amount of time. So number 10 is to be motivated and inspired by the success of others. This is kind of a tricky thing because everybody behaves different and when it comes to this, so some people, they get jealous of others. So whenever they see somebody doing really well, they tend to get jealous and start having negative thoughts or bad intentions. The thing you should be doing instead is if you see another person, another artist who's really successful, then kind of see it as, an, as a motivation. Because to me, whenever I see somebody who's super successful, making a lot of money, has a huge audience, working on special projects, it shows me what is possible. And that's really inspiring to me. So I actually enjoy seeing others successes because once I see it, I know it's possible. For example, if I see somebody making $50,000 a month as an artist, then instead of hating on that person, which is very easy to do, see it as an inspiration, a motivation to keep going yourself because it's actually just showing you that it's possible. So there's nothing negative, negative about that. See it as something very positive and change your mindset. It's all a mind game. So number 11 is a bonus tip, but probably the most important if I'm really honest, but it's hard to do. It sounds easy, but it's hard to do. I have to admit. So number 11 is to just do take action, like become active right now, pick up your pencil, start drawing, start doodling and stop overthinking. My biggest mistake is to overthink. So even before I record these videos, I start overthinking. I'm like, what if the video is going to be totally embarrassing? Or what if the video is not going to get the views that I wanted to get? What if more people dislike it than like it? There are all of these negative thoughts and you start to doubt yourself. And that's like the worst thing you can do, especially as a creative person. Self-doubt is one of the worst things there is in life. Like seriously, don't even go there. It's, it's just a dark path. So coming back to number 11, you really need to start doing. It doesn't matter how bad the drawing turns out. Just sketch anything. Because the moment you start something, it kind of puts you into that zone. And once you're in it, it's much easier to keep going for something more serious. So for example, sometimes when I'm really unproductive, I can't get into the mood of drawing a finished illustration. But once I start doing anything, so once I just start like scribbling something silly, it kind of puts me into that zone, into that creative zone. And then it's much easier to progress over to something more complex, to something more advanced. And so this is something that I like to do is to just pick up the pencil, open up your sketchbook and just see where it takes you from there. It's much easier than having this master plan of this amazing painting in your head while you're procrastinating. That's just super hard to do. So just do anything, um, draw on a napkin. So these are the 11 tips that um, I believe are the most effective when it comes to staying motivated, especially on a daily basis, because many of you have asked me, how do you manage to like create a new illustration every single day? And it's just a mindset. It's just mind games. And you have to trick yourself into becoming more productive. Now, there are some days where none of these tricks work and then it's totally fine to just take a day off or maybe take a couple of days off 
But if it's like not necessary, then try to keep drawing as much as you can. And even if it's just for 10 to 15 minutes a day, it's going to help because something is better than nothing. So anyways, guys, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber to my channel, then what are you waiting for? Click that subscribe button. And as always, guys, thank you for watching my videos. I love you with all my fart and soul. Peace. <laughs>